Now the first problem with this simple picture is that web crawling is not feasible with just a single machine because you just can't even fit all the documents that you have into a single machine. And we saw that when we were discussing indexing. Right? We talked about distributed indexing because uh, it's not possible for the entire index to reside on a single machine, which is why we had to distribute them. So crawling would also need to be distributed because what you're fetching is all the documents in the web. The other complication that has, we have not looked at in this simplified picture is that you would have many malicious pages on the web. So these include spam pages which have absolutely junk content which you preferably want not to crawl. But there could also be something called as a spider trap. So a spider trap is a kind of spam page which tries to uh, deliberately mislead the crawler into getting stuck fetching an infinite number of pages from a particular domain. So for example, if a crawler is at this particular node and let's say it's a, you know, it's a, it's a spider trap, then what happens is that the link from this node will be to some other document which is also spam. And this document could be dynamically generated. Okay, so the next time when the crawler moves from here to here, when, it, when the crawler fetches this page, this page will be dynamically stuffed with another bad URL to another bad page and then this bad page will be created on the fly. So the next time the crawler comes to fetch this bad page, that will in turn have a bad URL which will point to another you know, dynamically generated spam page and so on. So in this way, the crawler could indefinitely keep crawl, fetching, crawling and fetching these malicious pages and thus the index that would be built at, by this process would be stuffed with all kinds of bad pages. So that's something we want to avoid. One thing I did not mention here is when we fetch, as we are crawling, when we parse the documents to extract the URLs, the other thing that is also going to happen at this stage is we will parse the content of the document, right? converting, extracting the text, the body of the text from the document. And once we do that, then this document would be sent to the indexer. So everything that we talked about in chapters 1 to 4 is related to this particular process because as we are crawling these, crawling and fetching these documents, we are not just extracting the URLs from them and then deciding what the next, you know, what the next set of pages to be fetched are. That's what the crawler is doing. But the crawler is also linked to the indexer because when it parses a document and extracts the text out of it, that text is going to be input into the indexing pipeline as the document is parsed. Because crawling is not something that is going to ever stop for a search engine. You will have to continually keep crawling pages. In fact, you may have to even recrawl pages that you have already crawled after some time because pages can change and so this is how the crawling part is related to the index pipeline because uh, think of there being two, two different things happening here. One is the pure extraction of links to assist in further crawling and the other is the extraction of the text which is going to be uh, which is going to be input into the indexing pipeline through the pipeline that we saw, tokenization, linguistic uh, pre-processing and so on. Now even if a page is non-malicious, there could be several challenges. One of the challenges could be that the servers from which you are getting these different pages, the latency and bandwidth to those servers could vary. So some servers could take a very long time to return you the page that you're looking for because the bandwidth to those servers may be uh, very low or the server may not be a very efficient server. It could, could be very slow. The other thing that, uh, the other constraint that a crawler would face is that 
the webmaster who is the person in charge of a server sorry did you have a Excuse question sir. Uh, yeah. yes sir uh, in this slide uh, why would you have a bad link can you uh, where would you have a so in a spider trap oh. uh, yeah so a spider trap is something that is deliberately set up by by a malicious person who wants to trap the crawler into an infinite loop into an infinite sequence of fetches from that particular server uh, but why so like well if somebody wants to screw up the search index that's one way they could try to do that Like, like a competitor or what? Yeah, I mean, you can think of a competitor, or uh, you know, you could think of somebody who's deliberately coming up with this huge number of web pages to improve the page rank. You know, you can think of many reasons why somebody could set up a spider trap. So you can think of you know these web pages in turn pointing to not just to further spam pages along the chain, but also to some other pages which this guy wants to have a high page rank for let's say you know if there are lots of incoming links pointing to this page then you know the person may want to change the authority score of this document okay and obviously having a higher page rank or manipulating the authority score can be advantages to the person so these can be dynamically generated so you can generate an indefinite number of them right and in fact as you generate one you could delete the previous one just you know you may not have enough space on your server to generate so many pages but dynamically generating them can make sure that there are several links and at the same time you don't have more than a few documents stored on your server at any point now the person who is in charge of a server uh who's called a webmaster he may also put some constraints about how deep he wants you to crawl the site's url hierarchy for example uh let's say you have a personal website and you don't want people to uh you don't want crawlers to crawl certain sections of your website so you can impose that kind of a constraint on uh crawlers not impose but you can say that if you don't um uh, follow this kind of a stipulation then i'm not going to allow you to crawl my website i'll block you or something so that is done usually using a file called robots.txt let me actually directly go to that So robots.txt is a file that is set by the webmaster whose syntax is in accordance with a standard protocol that was developed in 1994 for giving spiders or crawlers or robots limited access to a website so the details of the protocol are on this uh, website but what the robots.txt file does is it announces its request to crawlers on what the crawler should not crawl okay so if you have a website say www.something.edu or something.com you can put your robots.txt file directly at the root of your uh you know file hierarchy and the crawler will fetch the robots.txt file see what constraints you want to you know specify and then stick to those constraints okay stick to those access restrictions so here's an example of that so this is the sample content of a simple robots.txt file which says that if the user agent is star that is for any crawler you want to disallow the fetching of pages that are in this particular subtree of your file hierarchy so the crawler is allowed to crawl any links from the root of your site 
which could be www.something.com but the crawler should not crawl pages which are in this particular section of your hierarchy but this is for crawlers uh, this is for a crawler in general but if the crawler happens to be a specific one let's say crawler by the name of search engine then you may not want to disallow or you could specify that for search engines search engines are allowed to crawl your website but no random uh, uh, you know guy on the web who's you know just trying to crawl uh, particular websites should access uh, this particular section of your hierarchy so let's see uh, for example what stanford's robot.txt file says so www.stanford.edu slash robots.txt so you can see that the it's a very small file and it says that for anybody who's trying to crawl this site please don't uh, please don't crawl the pages that are in this particular subtree and please don't crawl pages that are in this particular subtree that's what that's what uh, this means a crawler has to respect the webmaster's stipulations otherwise the crawler you know is in danger of being blocked the other thing that the crawler must ensure is that many sites have site mirrors that means the same exact pages are stored uh, are replicated across different servers so you want to ensure that you don't crawl the same pages multiple times because that would be a waste of processing power and also it would unnecessarily increase the size of your index uh, adding redundant information uh, redundant documents to your index and the crawler is also expected to be polite this means that you can't just you shouldn't just uh, write a crawler that's going to keep on bombarding the server with request after request thus overwhelming the server with you know this huge uh, number of requests in a short short period of time a burst of requests so what a crawler must do is it must be polite and politeness can be explicit uh, politeness can be uh, requested explicitly using a file like robots.txt asking you not to crawl certain sections of the website and it can also be implicit that means even if uh, regardless of what robots.txt says every crawler is expected to implicitly not bombard a server too often and explicitly this means that you shouldn't crawl uh, pages that are disallowed respect this particular file so this is a, politeness is something a crawler must do and the cr a crawler must also be robust that means it should be immune to spider traps and other malicious behavior from web servers that we just talked about now what other things should a crawler do well robustness and politeness are necessary for a crawler to have these are recommended for a crawler to have although you know it's not necessary but obviously there'll be problems if you if you if, if if a crawler does not have these properties a crawler must be capable of being uh distributed and that's for obvious reasons because you may not be able to fetch all your web pages into a single machine so it should be designed to run on multiple distributed machines hello uh, yes sir okay so a crawler must also be scalable so once you distribute your crawling it should be the case that if you want to increase your crawl rate crawl rate you can just add more machines to your distributed system and that should automatically result in an increase in the crawl rate 
just like we talked about in MapReduce, you know, where, when we had that distributed indexing, individual machines can fail, that's okay. Uh, but you could even add machines to the cluster and still have everything going as as it was before, except that it's just a scaled version now. Performance and efficiency are also important. So uh, a crawler should avoid wasting resources. So it should not, it should ideally not process duplicate pages because then it will be wasting processing power. And if it has the capacity to, you know, crawl at a particular rate, it's better for the crawler to be multi-threaded so that if one of the threads is waiting on a particular server, at least other threads are crawling simultaneously. Right? So it should be multi-threaded so that network resources can be uh, optimally used and, and the processing power can be optimally used. Then a crawler should fetch pages of higher quality first because the web is filled with junk and Clearly, the crawler should give more priority to pages that have a higher authority score or a higher page rank. A crawler should also be, at least for web scale systems, is not necessary for every crawler, but if, you, if you're building a web search engine, then the operation should be continuous. So you're never done crawling the web. You'll keep continuing fetching fresh copies of previously fetched pages. For example, if you have a news website, every day there are going to be articles that will be appearing on the website. So there's never a point where you say that I've crawled this website and you know I don't have to go back anymore. A crawler should also be extensible. So there could be documents appearing in new data formats or there could be newer fetching protocols that could you know appear later or over time. So your crawler code should be enough modularized that you don't have to rewrite the whole thing. You can just, you know, write some kind of a plugin for handling that new data format or that new fetching protocol and just use that protocol or that new data format without, you know, any significant change in your code. 